Hello, my name is Amanda Baird, and I'm going to be discussing the grand narrative of the Bible. And so I'd like to start in Genesis chapters 1 and 2 with creation, where God created man and the heavens and the earth, and he saw that it was good. Um, so shortly after that, we see in Genesis 3, where Adam and Eve were then punished for eating the fruit of the forbidden tree after the serpent tempted Eve. Um, so this ended up in them becoming cursed for disobeying, um, for disobeying God's will. And that's kind of the ripple effect that we see throughout the Bible from that one story that affects the rest of the rest of the grand narrative. So after all of that wickedness took over the earth and God saw man's actions, you know, immoral behavior um, and whatnot, he saw all of their actions and he promised to wipe all of mankind off of the face of the earth. Um, but he decided to bless Noah and his family and he came to Noah and asked him to create an ark and due to Noah's faithfulness and coming through with creating the ark and keeping his family safe, doing what he was told as far as getting animals on the ark, God blessed Noah and his family for their faithfulness and told them to multiply, um, and create many nations. He also promised that he would never flood the earth again and that every after every storm there would be a rainbow. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So after that I would like to go on to prophecies where we see um, where we really the one I would like to focus on is Abraham and where um, Abraham just goes through a lot um, and he fears never being able to have a child so after se several several chapters in the Bible he eventually was promised by God that due to his faithfulness and following what he was told to do that God would bless him and that his descendants would be great and among his descendants would be kings and then eventually um, Jesus So skipping kind of ahead, we then go to Luke. Um, we see throughout the Gospels in the beginning of the New Testament, um, the virgin birth. And this was a fulfillment on Jesus's, on God's promise um, out of everything that happened in the Old Testament that we had previously discussed. This was God keeping his prophecy to man, um, keeping his word and doing what he promised that he would do. Um, I think that something that's a huge takeaway from, from this section is that um, the virgin birth is such a particularly powerful message just because otherwise that would be impossible. That was a work of God that Otherwise, we would never see that happen. Um, so I think that that was a really important piece to the puzzle and God's fulfillment to the promise that he made, that he made to Abraham way back in the day. Um, throughout the Gospels, we see God li or Jesus living his life and walking throughout the world, creating miracles and healing just really proving that he is God in in man form that he can that he can be the holy like holy God holy holy man and and that was Jesus um so that took that took a lot of convincing um there were definitely people throughout Jesus's life that did not believe that he was God um, Jesus received a lot of, a lot of pushback, a lot of hatred, um, that, that he was a false prophet. Um, that was something that he experienced a lot throughout his life. Um, but we see time and time again, 
Jesus performing miracles and healing people um, and doing so many good works that really proved to a greater amount of the crowd that he was who he said he was. Um, so we also then see in the Gospels um, that we see Jesus' death and that ultimately Jesus was crucified on the cross. Um, and I think that this means a lot of things a lot of things um it stemmed from the disbelievers and the naysayers and the people who did not believe that Jesus was truly who he said he was um but as Christians this is the ultimate sacrifice that God sent Jesus to save everyone from their sins and as a as redemption for the rest the rest of us um so this is a huge part as a christian this is a huge part of the story of the grand narrative um and it stems from even coming all the way back from adam and eve how we needed that to get to to get to this point um so after jesus was crucified on the cross we then see him three days later raise from the grave um, so this was the, really the ultimate miracle that was performed, um, because it's taking a dead man and raising him to life. Um, and this completely just destroys every other, every other belief system and really just showed the people who were disbelievers he is he is who he says he is and here he is risen from the grave nobody thought that that was possible and here he is showing everyone who he that he truly is god and he is sovereign um so after he is raised from the dead um he goes into heaven and he promises that one day he will return again um so that's um, that's another part that Christians really, as a Christian, that we really need to focus on is that our entire lives are a preparation for Jesus to come again. And in the meantime, spreading the love of Jesus and spreading the word of God to, to all the nations. Um, so the rest of the New Testament we go throughout the Bible um, we really just see um, more of more more of mankind just um, going through trying to spread the word of Jesus and we ultimately see in Revelation the stories of the future and how and how one day Jesus will come back and what will happen in those times. Um, so that's kind of a summed up version of, of the grand narrative and really just compiling it all into such a short amount of time. And on it, honestly, it's such a lengthy discussion as a whole. Um, but thank you so much for watching and have a good day.